Welcome back to the channel Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluter's Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud. Today we will begin the reading of the chapter 2. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Let's go. Chapter 2 Werewolf in Paynham District 12 When we arrived at the end of the second month of courtship came our tests. Although we were in the same class, Marcos was a bit older than most other boys in the class. The reason for this is that he had spent a year abroad doing exchange studies, and since the school year there in Canada was different from September to May, he ended up staying in a late series here, in addition to having stayed the previous semester without studying, just traveling with his foreigners class for the rest of North America. This overseas experience gave a tone of maturity to Marcos that attracted all the other girls, which gave me both annoyance and satisfaction. After all, he had been interested in me which still gave me doubts despite of two very nice months, with many movies to watch, shopping trips, study hours together and many texts on the blog. He was already attending my house regularly. He was treated well by my mother and tolerated by my father. Most of the time it was to study but also to watch some movie together at home. What we did most was meet at the mall over the weekend and take a walk after class. It was our chance to be alone and talk. The strange thing about all this was that I still did not know anyone in his family and did not even know where he lived. He just told me that he lived near the school and that his parents spent a lot of time traveling. That week we were concentrating on studying for the math test. Even with all the teacher's effort to make math more familiar to us, it was still our great monster at school. He was remarkably good at math. In other disciplines he was also good but especially with numbers and calculations Marcos showed an out-of-the-ordinary facility. During class you can perceive it so much, because he was not very participative, nevertheless in the intimate day-by-day -day, it was possible to notice well this gift. Note, that statement alone doesn't tell much, he's smart. That's good. But for the way things evolved from that time to date this is extremely relevant. You'll see. On the day of the math test we sat one after the other. He did the test in just over 15 minutes, then scribbled some calculations in the blanks as he knew as we all know that math teachers want to see the calculation history and not just the answer in the end, which may well be the product of a skillful cheating from the test of the neighbor classmate. I was concentrating on doing my exam when in the middle of a reasoning came a sort of invading thought. Look at Marco's test, Mare. I glanced quickly and noticed that it was finished and all shown to me. It was strange, for it would be very easy to copy from his paper. I turned my attention to my test and tried to solve the equation in front of me. X. And. Etc. Then came the invading thought again. Now look at his test, the teacher is attending a student four rows ahead. He will not see you looking. Inevitably, I looked again and there was the result of the equation I was doing. It was as if he had helped me to conclude my reasoning. I got scared and I scolded myself for that. I promised I would not look again at Marco's test. At that moment, he called the teacher and handed it ready. He left without even looking at anyone or me. I finished my test after an hour and a half. I don't think I was bad. When I left the room and went looking for Marcos, I could not find him anymore. We were used to walking out of school together and he left me home on the way to his, but that day he disappeared without notice and did not leave a single message on my cell phone. I was surprised by that attitude but I tried not to worry. When I got home I thought about it a little. I wanted to share everything on the blog, but it was too intimate. I preferred to make my first comments about the upcoming premiere of The Hunger Games, which would feature a strong and fierce girl, Katniss Everdeen, who in fancy literature surpassed even the pop culture characters Princess Leia, Hermione Granger, and Bella from Twilight. Later Marcos finally called. Mare, how was the test? Good in you? Okay I think so. You left early and disappeared. Really? I looked for you after the exam and you're already gone. I missed our walk. Oh. He was evasive, as if he had something to say but not the courage to express himself. I wondered what that could mean. I tried to divert him to give him space so he could talk when he was comfortable. Do you want to go to the premiere of The Hunger Games? I don't know. Maybe. Have you read the book? Not really. I saw some summaries and comments on the internet, but I did not get the book to read. Have you ever? No. 
I was just curious. Marcos was still far away. I wanted him to open himself with me, for it was obvious that something was tormenting him. I remember Jacob's suffering in the second Twilight movie, New Moon. The young werewolf, who still did not know if he was going to become another dog in the pack or not, was teeming with passion for Bella. She, in the other hand, wanted the friend a lot, but the love for the vampire Edward was bigger than the werewolf pheromones that began to exhale from the super cute Jacob. Note. Curiously that pheromone would be the vampire source of revulsion when it smells the air, which eventually happened when Bella also became a vampire at the end of the saga. What could be tormenting my young boyfriend to the point that he was speechless? A few months ago he would not stop talking about my blog about his passion for movies. What happened at the end of that math test anyway? At the thought of this question as I silently waited for him to speak again, that voice in my head returned, the same one that told me to look at his exam. He wants you to invite him to your parents' wedding anniversary. What? I did not believe what I had just heard. I was not even remembering that event anymore. I ventured. Marcos, would you like to come to my parents' wedding anniversary? This weekend. Yes, I'd love it. From there the conversation took another turn and he was more open and receptive, as it always was. We said everything and said goodbye. Then I began to reflect. What was happening anyway? I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.